A very good day to you. Welcome to Amin Manyora's YouTube channel. My name is Jadel Cabrillo. I'm glad that you've joined us for our political conversation today. A conversation we hope will help this country in po better policy decisions and informed political moves. Prof, great to see you. How are you doing? Good, good, sir. The big conversation in the country is all about the Constitution. Now that we're looking at the impeachment of Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa, when we look at where public participation left us. It was all about impeach both when it came to this conversation of uh, Rigadi. From where you sit, do you think this would have been the right way of framing our constitution when it comes to the impeachment of the presidency? Talk about the deputy and the president. I don't think so. Mm. I think the two are, are, are together, but they are distinct. Mm. Each can go on their own and any can remain. One can remain, they can go both. If, if for example, the, the circumstances under which both can go are circumstances such as those of the Gen Z revolution. Mm -hmm. If the Gen Z revolution had gone higher than it had gone by another day or two, then a decent president and his deputy will see the country is bigger. Mm. So, okay, fine, uh, let's leave. Mm -hmm. And in which case, Papa or Roma would have acted for 90 days or 60 days during which we'll have an election without an IBC again. Now that we saw what happened with the Gen Z, are we there? When you listen to public participation, are we there? We, Where Kenyans are telling the presidency that we don't have trust in you and both of you should be. Presidents being told, they are, they, 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 people saying we don't have trust in you, those are normal things mm. in any democracy. Mm. Many times it's even put to the test through impeachment motions, censure motions, and so on and so forth, mm. depending on what democracy. In the parliamentary democracy, these things happen every day, every other day. Mm. Uh, vote of no confidence or censure, or in, uh, parliament, presidential systems, impeachment or threats of impeachment. Mm. And, in other words, uh, those running governments or heads of state always face this issue of Confidence. But I'm asking you that in the context of public participation of Rigadi Gashagwa, impeachment, and the Gen Z of July 25th. You see, s certain persons holding certain offices are expected to understand the mood of the country, to know what's going on in the country. So if you are a a judge of the High Court, of the Supreme Court, of the Court of Appeal. You must know what's going on in the country. If you are a president, if you are a member of parliament, you must know what is going on in the country. And that public participation, or the bit of it we saw, would help you to understand what exactly is going on in the country. And I think the people are not happy with that impeachment. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's, that, what, that should be your take home mm -hmm. yeah, from those forums. That, wait a moment. The people are not even interested in the details. They are just not happy with these things. Mm -hmm. What are the reasons? They feel there is much more important stuff to deal with than an impeachment. Mm -hmm. So if you are conscious of that, if you know the meaning of public mood and public opinion, what the country thinks and feels, mm. then you withdraw. So Today morning, mm. after I left Spice FM, I think we were chatting, I think with those guys or somebody else, and uh, we were saying, even Moy knew when things were not working and will quickly retreat. Mm. Eh? Yeah. Or withdraw. Mm. Or find a way. But this current regime doesn't seem to really care about what people think. Mm. So that's why you see when the church is up in arms. Mm. It's like they have tried some, some things with the president. Mm. And he doesn't seem to really care what people think. I pray for him. Uh, I really do. I'm not a very prayerful person, yeah. but I pray for the president. I hope something will make him see that there's need to listen to the people. You think he's kind of justified because from where he sits or how he speaks, it's as if I was voted so that I can make these tough decisions. 
do you think it's justified to say because I am president, I make these tough decisions? Yeah, when parents. you are, uh, is it Bush or who said I'm paid to make tough decisions? That's true. A president is paid to make tough decisions, but on behalf of the people, mm -hmm. and on matters where the people really uh, have a very strong views on something, it's good to listen to them. Mm. Yeah. Talk to me then about coming back to the constitution. We look at ourselves in the courts and Gashagwa's team is arguing that because this is the first time there is the impeachment of the deputy president, some things need to be looked, really looked into. Save how parliament undertook public participation, how parliament voted. From where you sit, do you think there is something that is lacking from the constitution so that we say that the courts need to interpret some things? No, first of all, before you go at what is lacking and why the court should come in and interpret, it is very obvious that uh, the people who have brought this impeachment are in a hurry to do so. They want to force it. Yet it is something provided for. And the processes are clear. Those provided for expressly by writing in the Constitution or implied or those you can only arrive at after a holistic reading of the Constitution. Mm. So they are in a hurry, almost circumvent mm. the entire impeachment process. How so? Because the Constitution does not limit them to uh, not less to some period of time. They can be in a hurry, they can take the 60 days as required. You see. Is, why is that a problem? Uh, a, a good reading of the Constitution, now that you have mentioned, Parliament is given, National Assembly, is given 60 days to process a name forwarded to it. The president is given 14 days. The day he receives the Gazette notice indicating that the sitting deputy president has been impeached, tried, and found unfit to hold office, and Senate has removed him from office. From the time he receives that, the president is given 14 days. There must be a reason why 14 days. Mm. It's not just given. Because this is Kenya. Mm. You might need to... Get, now, you see, the removal is an abstract thing. But the moment Senate, Senate pronounces, it's no longer abstract. It's real. Mm. You, you, you get it. And those who are hoping that it may not go through, that hope has come to an end. Now Gashago has been impeached, or anybody else tomorrow. You need time to figure out what to do. You need time to now to know what is the ground. Kenya on a summer ground. Mm. Ground in a summer. What are Kenyans saying? That can help you in choosing your deputy. Mm. You, you get it? That's why it's 14 days. Mm. To work with the intelligence. You know? Yeah. They float names before. The intelligence will tell you, hey, hey, hey. For this reason and this reason. That's why it's 14 days. Mm -hmm. Parliament, on the other hand, is given 60 days after they receive that name from the president. Our parliament wants not 60 days. They want to do it in 60 minutes. Mm -hmm. You are given 60 days. You want to do it in 60 minutes, one, one hour. Mm -hmm. And you are cheering and celebrating and laughing over a matter that is that serious. Mm -hmm. It is not for nothing that the framers of the Constitution gave 60 days. A holistic reading of the Constitution will tell you that they must involve the people of Kenya. Mm. They must involve. Mm. How come you want to involve the people of Kenya in vetting a cabinet secretary? Mutumdogo! Like in a deputy who chuck and become president, you want to do it in one hour. Mm. Does it add up? You think the framers of the constitution were stupid? Mm. If they say vote on their name and give you 60 days, they know you have to follow the provisions of the constitution in matters of public participation. Mm. Due diligence. Has parliament received a report from the intelligence mm. about Kindiki? Mm. And the other organs of state? So the, the have they talked to the people of Kenya? Because mm. then that Kindiki is being put there by parliament and and yet, the person Kindiki is going to replace was put there by Kenyans. Mm. 
Mm. You must talk to the people of Kenya. So you're talking of Kenya. about parliament, but I would want to know then, is this the problem of implementing the constitution or is it the problem of how the constitution is as it is? Is it the people or is it the people in parliament so far, or is it the constitution? So far, the constitution has provided everything. So far. So if we just follow the constitution, then the regard would, would be removed, yes, but in the right manner, with the right speed, with the proper consultation and public participation. It will be okay. Mm. But after that, there's, there's a question that is lingering, which is simple. You remove Gashago and put there Kindiki without people voting for him. Mm. How if Ruto is now impeached, who becomes president? Kindiki. Was Kindiki put there by the people? No. Who does Kindiki now choose to be his deputy? Uh, is it somebody from the, from the people or just from him? He, him. And then parliament, parliament votes for how many minutes? <laughs> 60. 60 minutes. Is that what the constitution envisaged? No. But the constitution now ought to come out clearly on those things. Mm. We need to reconsider this issue of a deputy president being impeached and another one coming through the back door, through parliament. We must reconsider. And that's why I strongly believe, given our circumstances, given the experience we have gone through with our vice presidents and deputy presidents, mm. we have to revert to the old constitutional provision where the president selects his own vice president and he can do with him as he wishes. You can hire him in the morning, fire him in the afternoon. Mm. But should something happen and the office is vacant of president, we go back to the people. Mm. Yes. We go back to the people and elect another president. Mm. Because this spare one we put there eh, is mm. causing us a, a lot of problems. Mm. And we want to remove the one we put. We elect a president, among other things, on the basis of the person he gives us as Kenyans. Jamani mimi ni binadamu. Kitu kinifanyikia. Huyu atakuwa president wenyu. Ama nikifika mahali ni choke na kazi. Ama ni ondolewe kwa ofisi. Huyu jamani mimi na wawonyesha. Muna kubali ya neza kuwa raisi wenyu. Tunasema ndiyo. Tik, tunamjagua. Now, you want to remove that person. Who was the reason we voted for you? One of the reasons. We had an assurance if there was a vacancy in your office as president. This man, umetuonyesha atakuwa. Now you are sneaking in somebody from the back door, mm. brought by parliament, the president and parliament. Mm. Those are now the things we need to look at. If you look at the nomination and approval of Kindiki without commissioners in the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, would you say that his nomination and approval does not follow the constitution, despite the president uh, sending the name to IBC? I believe there's a secretariat that approved him. Should there be commissioners? And some people also argue that IBC's role is only when it comes to elections and not in nomination. What would you say about that? You see, technically, IBC must be in place for Kindiki's name to be given to parliament. Because even them, see, even the president, he has opened himself to attack by presenting something from IBC. If I were him, I would have ignored. Mm. I would just have given the name minus IBC. Now that he has introduced IBC, <laughs> it is open to scrutiny. Which IBC gave this name? Which IBC? IBC itself has said they have no power. Mm. That's why we are pending by elections True. that are in complete violation of the constitution. That a seat can only be vacant for so long. You know that, eh? Yes. And now... Those timelines have been including boundary delimitation, yes. which is a constitutional provision. They have not been able... Why didn't the, why didn't the Secretariat do it? Mm. Why hasn't the Secretariat undertaken the by-elections? Why haven't they, they, have they done the boundary review? Yes. Because they know they are not properly constituted. Mm. So, IBC minus the commissioners mm. is not IBC. So now that is, it's under scrutiny... It's like somebody's house he has gone out of the country. Domestic workers are there. That's not their house. The owners have to come for it to be... Mm. Yeah. I'm asking, now that there is scrutiny, <laughs> yeah, can yeah. they argue that 
uh, IBC's role is only in election and not in nomination. No, you can't argue that because it's there in writing. What I can say is this. If these guys were not in a hurry as to raise suspicion, those are some of the things that could be ignored. Because those are technical details you can ignore. Basically, if we were trying to do everything according to the provision of the law and technical details, mm. then we will do nothing. Any court will tell anybody. Mm. The idea of IBC not being there to provide Kindiki is nice. It can't hold back. But because you have shown, you have not shown goodwill, mm. you are in a hurry, you are acting in a suspicious manner, mm. that becomes important. Everything that has been provided for must be fulfilled so as a way of checking your, your speed. Mm. Speed that thrills is speed, speed that, that kills. kills. <laughs> <laughs> then tell me though, uh, finally, when you look at the letter and yes. the spirit, yes. as lawyers say, of the constitution, mm. does Gashagwa have a case? Oh, a big one. A big one. Gashagwa can only lose this thing in our courts if our courts do not live up. Uh, if the, the courts are sometimes, you know, courts, we blame them sometimes. But let me put it differently, because this way I might be antagonizing the judiciary. You never know when you find yourself there. Let me put it this way. My understanding of the situation is that this impeachment cannot survive court scrutiny. I think that's better. That's safe. This impeachment, it cannot survive court scrutiny. And I leave it at that. There's no but. No but. It cannot survive a court scrutiny. Now, if it survives, then yes. I leave it to you.